Cancel Court is an improv comedy show. Some opinions and statements are exaggerated for entertainment purposes. The views expressed on Cancel Court are solely those of the individuals providing them and do not reflect the opinions of Defiant Digital or their respective affiliates or employees. Basically, we're going to piss a lot of people off, but f*** it. Cancel Court with Judge Tony Towns. In this episode, the trial of Drake versus Kendrick Lamar. Which Drake are we talking about? The Drake that want to fuck every girl in the world? The Drake that's down with Rich Gang and uh, Birdman? The Drake that's Young Money? Or the Drake that's Jamaican? And now, let's go to the courtroom. In this quarter, representing Kendrick Lamar. This time, he looks like a used car salesman. Welcome back, Chris Powell, AKA CP. And in this quarter, representing Drake. Why do light-skinned niggas always have to dress like Shug? Please welcome Doughboy. Come to order. Cancel Court is now in session with Judge Tony Towns. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. As many of you know, the rap Mount Rushmore has been a forever revolving debate. Drake and Kendrick Lamar are two rappers that have been placed here alongside J. Cole and many others. But today, Drake and Kendrick have been unanimously crowned the two best rappers in this era. So we're here today to determine which artist is the number one rapper of this generation. Is it Drake or is it Kendrick Lamar? We have one of our veteran lawyers, Mr. Chris Powell, AKA CP, representing Kendrick Lamar. Mr. CP, it seems like since your start here on Cancer Court, you've become a Hollywood leading man, a superstar, some might say, on your big roles on Hulu and HBO, just to name a few. What do you say to that? I say, uh, you're absolutely right. I feel like, you know, coming from where I come from, um, Detroit, the West Side, Brightmoor, it's not just about me, it's about other brothers and sisters who are motivated by my ability to, to turn the struggle into something beautiful, right, using my creativity, right? And that's why I chose Kendrick today, because I feel like there's a similar story in that. Okay, well thank you, sir, for that powerful Martin Luther King speech. Thank you. I appreciate thank it. You. And newcomer, lawyer, Anthony Belcher Jr., AKA Doughboy, representing Drake. Mr. Doughboy, welcome to our courtroom. Uh, out of curiosity, you've referred to yourself as Fat Drake. How did you come about crowning yourself that name? Well, it wasn't really a crowning. It came from a backhanded compliment from a young lady. Uh, she seen me, she, she was like, who do you look like? I was like, I don't know, who do I look like? She was like, oh shit, I got it. Nigga, you look like Drake. If he completely let himself go. I said, oh. Like if he said, fuck the gym, you would be him. I said, oh, that's good. So I just took it and ran with it, you know what I mean? I made a character, you know what I'm saying? Made some parody videos, you know, 20 million views later, here I am. Thank you. So, yeah. It makes sense. You do kind of favor Drake. A little bit. Just a little More bit. More like his mom, but yeah, you favor yeah, you know. <laughs> Both sides will have two minutes for opening statements. Then you present factual evidence to the jury. We will end with two minutes of closing arguments. Once all evidence is presented, the jury appears without bias, will decide the fate of which rapper is the number one rapper of this generation with a clear and decisive judgment. Are we clear? Yes. Clear. Thank you. We will begin with Kendrick Lamar's representation. Please proceed with your opening statements. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, your hairline is impeccable. Damn Thank you. Look... I, my barber Sephora's at Will yeah. at Sephora's. All right, damn near look fake. I'm gonna tell you, um... <laughs> <laughs> something that, something that, something that the, uh... The, uh, the defense for Drake, I guess, or the Drake side or whatever, Mr. Belcher. I feel bad. That young lady probably single-handedly ruins your fitness uh, struggle because she gave you a little bit of solace in your bigness. You know, she, <laughs> she, she made you feel cute and big, you know? And as a Drake fan, I mean, that's, that's what Drake does for his fans, doesn't he? You know, make the big girls feel cute and big, don't it? You know? <laughs> um, <laughs> And that's cool. I think that as a Drake fan myself, I, I really do enjoy some Drake music. I think that I've, I've, I've seen some of the hangups and some of the reasons why Drake gets kind of picked on a little bit, right, in the hip hop industry. People like Pusha T coming in and really just pushing Drake around, pulling back the curtain on what Drake was doing with hiding children, you know? Drake, Drake is from Canada, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The yeah. six. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and where are you from? Dobo? Sacramento. Swagger Sacramento. Sacramento. If, if this was the United States, right, mm -hmm. 
Where's Sacramento? Is over here? California, northern. northern, Northern California. The capital. Yeah, a sneeze away from Canada. Wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you say? Wouldn't you perhaps say that somebody with a kind of a, I don't know, an upbringing that's just a little bit, you weren't near Compton, you weren't near any of the black real epicenters of the West Coast or America. One would obviously say that maybe perhaps your taste in who a hip hop great would be could damn near be irrelevant because <laughs> nobody is talking about fucking you and the Sacramento. It's not the Sacramento though. I love Sacramento. Where's my camera? I love Sacramento. And there's some hood shit in Sacramento. But I'm from Detroit, okay? And we go to Sacramento to chill. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I get it. I really do get it, you know, because this reminds me of the Tupac and Biggie debate. What is more important, substance or a good time? As a black man in America, we enjoy and we deserve a good time. That's why Drake's music feels so good because it's like, man, yeah, you know what? I am swagged out, I am, I do want to party, I do. But let me not forget what the nature of the thread is, right? Kendrick's made songs about pour up and drink and going over the struggle of what it means to be a real black man in America, teetering that line. I do want to have fun, but America not a place for a man like me to have fun. People like me are getting shot just because they look like me. That's like the real struggle of what a black man in America is. But if you didn't know that, let's say you were from another country where like healthcare was free and they put gravy on fries and shit. <laughs> you would think it was all gravy. <laughs> and your starting point would not be to, to show the struggle as a beautiful transition. It would be to come in and get the girls. It would be to come in and be the coolest. It would be to come in and do the love song. And that's very, very cool. Those songs win awards. But when the real shit been happening, like it's been happening in this country, we not turn into Drake to figure out what the fuck we need to do next. Thank you, Mr. CP. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank and you. And I just wanna say too, the robe is crispy today. You know what I'm saying? You know, and, and the tie is hitting like Malcolm X. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. No problem, Your Honor. Mr. Doughboy, please begin with your opening statement. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, you, thank you. Uh, you've heard his rhetoric and hearsay. Now it's time for some hard-hitting facts, Your Honor. Um, but before we even start, I would like to pass a motion okay. to see if we can disbar CP and throw this case out before we even start it. Look Why how this man is dressed in your court of law, Your Honor. The man has jeans, a t-shirt, a fake anklet on his neck, posing as a chain. <laughs> he doesn't know if he wants braids or dreadlocks. He has dreadlocks. <laughs> a fucking corduroy hat. Get this piece of shit out of here. You look like the manager at Captain J's. So I just think that he shouldn't even be here arguing, but he, like, like this representation, he's a lot like Kendrick fans. He's a lot like Kendrick. He just feels like he can do whatever the hell he wants. You know, he can crack a couple fat jokes. Ha, ha, ha. Let's argue the hard-hitting facts about Drake. Let me just break it down to you, sir. So you look like a football man. I am, I am. I'm who's, a... your, who's your favorite running back? You look like a football well, man. Well, uh, it is... Uh... <laughs> My favorite running back will have to be uh, Kenneth Walker the third. He was okay. a former Michigan State Spartan, so he plays for Seattle right now. Man, gotcha, gotcha. broke okay. all the records. Broke okay. all the records. Ran gotcha. over Michigan. <laughs> all right. Like, all right. Touch down. <laughs> all those touchdowns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Go green. Well, in the NFL, when people think about running backs, they, they often say different things like LaDamian Tomlinson, oh. Walter Payton, right. Adrian Peterson. But when you go to the hard hitting facts, you'll see Emmitt Smith is the number one running back. But a lot of times he gets a lot of flack. People say he benefited from a system. And they say they don't really want to give him his props. So he never really gets that GOAT status. Now I know a lot of you are looking at me right now. Like what the fuck is this fat nigga up here talking about football for? And we supposed to be talking about Drake and Kendrick, right? That's exactly what I'm looking at. Okay, excellent. I'm glad you asked. What do they do every play in football? When they say hype, what's the first thing that happens? The fat niggas Off all play. Right, <laughs> offensive line, defensive line. They hit, right? Correct. And then once the guy has the ball, you gotta hit him. The play is not over until somebody gets hit. Same thing in hip hop. You gotta deliver a goddamn hit, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's what I need. I need hit records. I don't care about the emotional shit you put on your album, about your life and introspection. We only bought the album because what? You dropped the fucking hit record. So I'm here to come with hard hitting facts. Three things that you can't argue with. Sales awards and cultural impact. And I will make it clear as fucking day 
that Kendrick Lamar and Drake don't even belong in the same conversation. You know who we should be putting Kendrick Lamar against? People like Lauryn Hill, people like Andre 3000. You know why? Because they don't fucking rap enough. They don't do enough music. They rap when they want to rap. They show up, do some cute shit, and they leave. They go ride bikes and do seashells and shit like that. Not against Drake. Drake is here every day, every year, and I'm going to show you consistency over emotions. We're going to take emotion out of this, and I'm going to show you, bar none, that Drake is better than Kendrick. I'm going to set my big ass down. I'm sweating, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Ooh, he looking like Drake with a cake. Can I say this? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. CP. Can I just say this? Um, first of all, that was a compelling, compelling opening argument. The way you barely was able to connect making a hit with making a hit, I get it. I get it. And it was a stretch, you know, but, you know, elastic. That hat is that. a stretch over those um, bullshit braids. Yeah, 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 you get that. You get that. <laughs> and why do you have a corduroy hat? When did they start making corduroy hats, Your Honor? I don't... Didn't know that was a thing. Order in the court. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Leave his hat alone. Corduroy gonna, hat. They don't gonna, even make corduroy jeans anymore. They're making hats. Corduroy hats. He's gonna roast my fashion. A corduroy hat? You Detroit niggas is different. <laughs> corduroy your honor, hat, nigga. Your honor, your honor. <laughs> you got a corduroy bird Your honor. Hat. Order. You, you, you sent us that you hat to 25 and life. He look like an usher at churches. <laughs> 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 so you're right to your seat, man. There's a two pieces with, with a biscuit and a uh, jalapeno pepper. <laughs> Did y'all get that out to our system? Y'all niggas good? Yeah. <laughs> Please excuse our ratchet ass judge. Cancel Court will be right back. Cancel Court basically brings all of the issues that we fight about on Twitter onto a show where we can actually get a debate. It provides a space for things that are oftentimes talked about and argued on social media and in barbershops, and it puts it somewhere where it can be lighthearted, yet still have some of those important views talked about out loud. What separates Cancel Court from other shows is the fact that they give both sides of the story. The improv part is just really fun, and I think it opens up for a multitude of different creative explosions and surprises. You all do a wonderful job cutting it and editing it and stuff like that. Anytime you lean into improv, it is 100% who you cast. Improv can go 100% the way you want it to go and 1000% the way you do not want it to go. The fact that we're just up there saying our thoughts without any type of predetermined script Shout out to Defiant Digital for even letting us do that, because that is, uh, that's risky. <laughs> Reading the comments and different things like that, I want the fans to know, these are not always our feelings, okay? This is for y'all. We do this because we love you. At this time, we will proceed with your evidence to present to the jury. You have two minutes. Please begin, Mr. Drake. Now, like I had told you when we first started, we're gonna talk about facts, right? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna talk about sales, impact, and we're also gonna talk about awards, okay? Now that's the only way we can really judge who is better, because if you just like Kendrick because you just like his shit, cool. Put the shit in your headphones, listen to it at home, cool. But if we're gonna decide who's the number one artist, we gotta go to these things, okay? Let's first go off to awards. Now when we talk to awards, there's a bunch of awards that you can go through, different type of awards. Now, Drake has won a total of 192 awards out of 382 nominations. Now, Kendrick has won 161 awards out of 300, can you tell me that number right there, sir? What, what number is that? Oh, I like you. Oh, that's 399. 399. Wait, so you say Kendrick has more uh, nominations than Drake? He has more nominations and less wins. Wait, so more nominations and less albums? Hmm. Okay, okay. Does it sound like quality over quantity, perhaps? Okay. Does it sound like the establishment even understands that? Does it, does it sound like the reason why people celebrate a nomination is because really, the win is really subjective. We don't know what the margin of victory is, and we never know. Mm -hmm. It's who won, right? Mm -hmm. but let me throw another number at you, shall we? Uh, 91, Your Honor. 91. That's how many Grammys are awarded every year. 91. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Uh -huh. You know how many Pulitzer Prizes are made every year? Mm -hmm. 13. For music, poetry, and literature. How many of those does Drake have? Sir, we Who will gives get, a fuck? We will get to <laughs> What the fuck is a Pulitzer, sir? 
I know pulled pork sandwiches. That's what I know. I don't know pulitzers. I understand that, but let me, but let me, but let me, but let me, but let me educate you. My legs? Let me educate you about some Pulitzer Prize winners. Let me a Pulitzer. Mr. CP, let him finish. You have the chance to rebuttal. You're let right. him finish. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're let right. me get through You're this. Right. You see me sweating in this goddamn suit? You see me sweating in this goddamn suit? Can you imagine you the smell that. under this? I can ask. Just dap yourself I'm baking in here. Shut yeah, your ass up. You built like a bell pepper. You okay. may proceed, Mr. Gilbert. Okay. Mr. When we're talking about awards, the man has won more awards while being nominated for less. 192 out of 392 versus 161 out of 399. However you break that down, I don't really care. All I know is my guy has more awards with less nominations, so he's winning better. Now, let's talk about record sales. Kendrick sells some records. He's pretty cool. He has sold 35 million Albums, ain't that, ain't that some goddamn, whoa, Ooh, that was 35 so million, ain't that a lot of fucking records? Guess how many Drake has sold? 170 million. Ooh. What are we talking about? Why are we wasting taxpayers' dollars with this shit? <laughs> you kidding me? Uh-huh, that means by that rationale, if you take the 35 that Kendrick sold and you doubled it, you'd have to add another 100 million just to touch Drake. <laughs> What the fuck is you talking about? <laughs> Who's listening to this encyclopedia reading ass nigga Kendrick? Who cares? <laughs> Nobody cares if he's listening to that shit. Now let's also talk about just the sheer volume of music because that's what rappers are supposed to do, right? They're supposed to get into the booth and rap, right? So let's talk about Kendrick's discography. Did I say that right? This is it, yeah, yeah. Is it discography, a discography? You got very small teeth, but it sounded right. It's cool, it's cool, cool, okay. <laughs> He has about five, about five records, give or take. You got the section, 8.0. That was a mixtape. Mixtape, but we'll give him that, because it was great. Good Kid, Mad City, classic. Classic. To Pimp a Butterfly. A Butterfly? A Butterfly, yeah. Damn was, was great, and uh, the Mr. Mr. Morale. Morale well, okay, I don't even know what that shit was, so we're not even. You don't know what that was. I mean, the album, it was, uh, it was long. It was, uh. it, it felt like a therapy session. I was just like, ah, oh, where are the hits at? There was no hits, there was no, there was no hits. Now let's just go to Drake. I'm gonna just try to run this, just from sheer music. You got So Far Gone, Thank Me Later, Take Care, Nothing Was The Same. If you're reading this, it was too late. Views, what a time to be alive with future. More life, Scorpion, Scary Hours, Care Package, the best in the world, the certified lover boy, and then he got so sick of rap music, he made a fucking dance album. That's how good this nigga is. And he only has 392 nominations. With 192 wins. With 700 songs. And lastly, have you guys ever heard of a thing called the Drake Stimulus Package? Let me break it down. This is where other artists benefit from working with Drake. Some people try to say, oh, he's just trying to steal their swag. No, Drake is using his influence, his platform, to put other artists on. Did you guys know that Drake has assisted 32 artists to their highest charting Hot 100 position? 32 different artists. He gave 18 artists their first Hot 100 hit, 18 artists. And then he had six songs where he assisted multiple people with their first top 100 hit. And when you have a nigga like Drake, he is battling niggas that are legends. He ain't battling other rappers. Do y'all know that Drake has more fucking number one hits than the fucking Beatles? The Beatles? Order. He has 42, 42. Guess how many Kendrick has? Two! <laughs> nigga, what are we talking about? The fuck are we talking about? Two! Who's listening to this nigga? I rest, Your Honor. I gotta Thank go pat you. down. I gotta go towel off. I Thank go, you, Mr. I gotta Doughboy. Towel off. More of Doughboy making light skinned niggas proud when Cancel Court returns. Do you have a rebuttal to of all of his accusations I, I would, and facts? Can we, can we, first of all, Doughboy, woo! <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay? <laughs> can I get somebody to test the floor before I... <laughs> <laughs> never mind, never mind. I'm gonna, I'm gonna trust God. Um, you know what's crazy? Um, listening to Doughboy talk about numbers and awards and 
sales. Letting that be the metrics of success. You know what that sound like? That sound like how white people try to skew murder numbers and other numbers that while the black community only makes Objection, y'all. He, he can't use the black card against a black guy. This nigga wild. Overruled. Overruled. This nigga, okay. Overruled, Mr. Doughboy. Let him finish his point. Okay. Who is Kendrick Lamar making music for? You says the black community. You know, what's funny is that, you know, yeah, you have Drake who has the whole country of Canada, where he's from. It's, 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 it's real easy to have a lot of record sales when you got a whole another country buying your shit. Granted, Kendrick sells all over the world too. And that's not an excuse. But so we're I'm, being punished for being versatile. No. Copy. Them. No, 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 no. We're being punished for honestly being somewhat of a swagger jacker. Which Drake are we talking about? The Drake that wanna fuck every girl in the world? The Drake that's down with Rich Gang and uh, Birdman? The Drake that's Young Money? Or the Drake that's Jamaican? <laughs> <laughs> We talk about ponytail Drake or man bun Drake. We talk about muscle Drake or skinny Drake. We talk about Drake that's cool with Kanye. Drake objection, that's not cool Your with Honor. Kanye. We can't have hair jokes from this guy. We can't objection not with that hair dude. You know, so. Oh, we're really? okay. We let Crane sit up here and talk about. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna get those turtles. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Listen, what we're not gonna do is sit up here and act like having five albums drop over the last maybe 12 years and that equates for 399 nominations for awards. I don't know if you understand that, but that feels like when you're in a city like Chicago and they have a crime problem, or Detroit, and they have a crime problem, and the whole world makes it seem like that's the whole black community. That's, that's, what, that's what you're trying to do right now. Like, you're overlooking the fact that the quantity it's not so much more important than the quality. If what you're saying is correct, metric-wise, if he's hit for hit, all these number one, then let's, let's, let's multiply his, his discography by the nominations, shall we? Because really, he should be in upwards in the thousands of nominations for shit with all of these albums, but he's not, right? His impact is on little girls and teenagers and pop music, which is fine. A lot of his projects were mixtapes, so he has seven studio albums, so you gotta take that weighted down, so that's 300. 92 by seven albums. Can you tell him that, that this ain't no motherfucking drive through He can't just be talking. <laughs> Let me run down some stuff because you asked, who won a Pulitzer Prize? Kanye West has a bunch of Grammys, a bunch of awards. Jay-Z, a bunch of awards, you know, in the ranks of these people. Um, who else? Uh, shit, Kid and Play probably got some motherfucking Grammys. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you ask, who the fuck wins a Pulitzer Award? <laughs> the answer is no fucking body. Kendrick Lamar is the only rapper to ever win a Pulitzer Prize. That's like some Martin Luther King level, generational shifting level type shit. Before Obama left the office, he asked for certain people to be in the office with him to see him off. Kendrick Lamar was one of them. Not Drake, because he's not American. Nobody give a fuck. <laughs> right? It's like, I hear what you're saying, doughboy, boy, and it's true. Sometimes things become a, a global phenomenon, but that's not indictive of what the community that birth that is about, right? I can name a bunch of rappers. Krayshawn, remember her? A little white girl? M remember she was on that Tooth Chain song? This right here is murderers from the streets of the best they've heard of us. Remember that? She went platinum. Cause going platinum is about being popular, right? Having your lyrics studied at colleges. Having, having, having professors teach classes about your lyrics is making an impact. See, it's easy to rhyme titty with giddy and you in the city and we, that's fine. I don't know my name is lying, but nothing and nothing, that's fine. I get that, it sounds sweet. It sounds sweet. It really do, right? But you ever had somebody try to sneak a vegetable into one of your meals after you clearly said you do not fuck with spinach? <laughs> it's very hard to do, right? You ever hear vegans talk about how delicious they make, this stuff tastes like that and this stuff tastes like that? It's very hard to do. I know you don't, you, you, you probably tried, you probably ate a vegan, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> But to make the struggle sound as beautiful as Kendrick does, the real struggle, the real struggle that we all share, not the, my dad's in America and he can't come see me because my mom's in Canada and I'm on a TV show. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, I'm talking about the real struggle to make that into art. Good kid, Mad City, dog, that's all of us. You was a good kid. You was in like a, you know, like a, 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 a ticked off city. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> But it's like, if you ask me, do I want to party or do I want to elevate, I'm gonna want to elevate every time, right? You ask me, do I want pizza or do I want a vegetable or do I want to extend my life with eating healthy? I'm gonna choose what is gonna nourish my soul and my body before I choose what's gonna make a bitch twerk. 
I'm a big Drake fan, but when you put him against Kendrick, I gotta take Kendrick because that's 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 what's gonna bring the longevity. Like, dog, like you're talking about a white establishment that's giving awards to what nigga they choose. And you don't think that the light-skinned nigga from Canada, who is the ambassador for the Raptors and who was on the Greenerits, or whatever the fuck the name of the show was, as a black man, I can't believe that you would take skewed numbers over the facts. You know how many things are the GOAT that we don't even get credit for? Shit, shit that we've invented that we that's never gonna be the GOAT because it's not that popular. Nobody gonna give us real credit. Who you think invented chicken tenders, nigga? <laughs> no, nobody thought to fry that shit up until we did it. Right? You worried about numbers, like I said, before you cut me off. That's how white people do us. That's how they skew us. It's more of them that's on welfare, because it's more of them. If you sell them albums to white kids, then yeah, it's way more of them than it is our community. You know how dope it is to be a black artist and be talking about what he's talking about, to go as far as he's going, to have that many fucking nominations and that little bit of albums? Stop acting like this nigga's not amazing. Stop acting like, real talk, there is not a lyricist better than Kendrick Lamar. Ask Eminem. We talk about rap. We ain't talk about the trap, but I feel you though. That shit is cute. Bitch, don't kill my vibe. Cancel Court will be right back. Do you have any rebuttals? I absolutely have some rebuttals. Please push you got a big old rebuttal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a couple of things that he talked about. He's talked about that uh, Kendrick talks about the struggle. Struggle, black man in America. I understand that. We a lot of, see a lot of black men, black women in here. We understand. It is a struggle, and we get it. It is tough. Nobody's saying that that's not an easy thing to do. I totally get that. But what I think people don't give Drake enough credit for Drake came in the game in 09, and he has been arguably top three the entire time. Who stays on top for Kendrick. 13 years? That is a reign of a long fucking time. But outside of that, how did he do it? He Your did Honor, it by coming the facts in. again. If you think that Kendrick had been top three since he came out, you're ridiculous. Hold so on. come on now. Don't say that like it's only for you. No, I, first, I can say the same let, thing. And let me be clear. I'm not saying that Kendrick is trash. He's one of the no, greatest artists. No, he's top three, like okay, I said, okay. though. But the he hasn't enough Drake music is. to be top three. No, he has, he's top three with that little you bit of music. You have to go back and listen to the old shit. Right. Think about all the rappers that have come and gone. Think about what rappers talk about. What do rappers talk about, Your Honor? Trapping, busting their gun, keeping the real, or you know, the black struggle, different things. Drake rapping rap about Sprite. Can I get a? Can, can we set yeah, this nigga up, please? Over, over Jesus. Mr. CP, let Hear him what I'm saying? Drake came in and made it comfortable to be your fucking self. He made it cool to feel your feelings. On Marvin's room, fuck that nigga that you think. Yeah. Nigga, I felt like that too. <laughs> fuck that nigga if you think you love him. And that's what I'm saying. It's difficult. He never switched it up. And he can be so versatile. He does so much for the hip hop community. Think about all the artists that Drake introduced us to. Who the fuck has, has Kendrick introduced us to outside of Baby Keem? And that's no shot at Baby Keem. But who else has Kendrick given us? Who else has he collaborated with them and like, listen to this new guy. Let me put you on to this guy. When has he ever done that? When has he ever put somebody else in the position to say, I'm gonna use my platform and put you in the position your and show other niggas your you're Your honor, can we focus on Drake and Yes, Kendrick I'm showing you the greatness of what Drake I'm letting they you know on. the greatness of what Drake does. Drake gave us the uh, uh, going up on a Tuesday. Exactly, exactly. And another thing, what is one of the most essential parts of hip hop? Battling, right? Did, did Drake not give us one of the most classic Battle rap records when he just uh, just ethered Meek Mill on back to back. They had it playing in the club. Kendrick won't even get in the ring with nobody. Who will Kendrick battle? Everybody always wants to say Pusha. Drake actually kicked his ass in the battle. Pusha came out with some little facts. Oh, you got a kid, nigga. That doesn't mean your bars were crazy. You just said some shit that we didn't know and it was shock value. So that's what I'm saying. If we're talking about the essence of hip hop and what we love, your man will get in the ring and battle. Y'all ever watch battle rap and you see Drake in the, fr in the front fucking row at URL events with, with a bunch of battle rappers, once again, using his platform for younger MCs. Kendrick don't do that. So that's why I'm saying the three things, the three metrics you must measure. Sales, I already told you. 
135 million more. Already told you about the, the awards. He has 30 more awards with 30 less nominations. And the overall impact on the culture, it is irreparable. I can't even tell you how obvious it is. This man is important to the ecosystem of hip hop. And there's never been a run on top for this long ever in the history of hip hop. I rest my case, Your Honor. Sir, I have a question though. This was thrown into our document and I wanted to ask you this because I want you to speak to this in okay. regards to our jury. Mr. Doughboy, it says that uh, some say mm -hmm. your client, Drake, is a culture vulture. Okay. To other genres and sounds. Uh, some even go so far as saying that he steals other people's flows and accents. Mm -hmm. What do you say to that? I say that that's a skewed point of view. I think that it takes a skill to be as versatile as Drake is. I don't feel like he's taking people's flows. He's saying, oh, this is what you're doing? Let me hop on this. Every rapper can't do that. Some rappers just stay in the same type of mode. He's not taking from things. He sees stuff that's hot, he brings a bigger light to it, and he uses his platform to bring it to the world. So I'm gonna bring my light to put on your shit, and it's gonna let us grow. It's not you biting. It's you being an OG and elder statesman and helping the young Gs. Let me ask y'all this. Have you, have you ever listened to a Drake song and it helped you get over an ex? Have you ever listened to a Drake song before you went out to the club? Have you ever listened to a Drake song when you was working out? I just told you Drake makes fat girls feel good. I already said that when we first started. A fat bitch put on a Drake song Objection. and be like, there should be no more fat jokes right. for the rest of this episode. Sustained. Benigan's got fried ice cream. Shit is fine. So to speak to your point, the nigga has enough hits records, stats, sales by himself. He don't gotta do shit anymore. So he don't have to take or do anything from anybody. If anything, he's helping the people he's sharing with. Any other questions, Your Honor? Thank you, Mr. Doughboy. Can I take this jacket off now? Yes, you can. <laughs> you look like you suffer. <laughs> don't move. Cancel Court will be right back. Top things that will get you blocked on social media. Stop showing us pictures of your kids. If you started off ass shot, ass shot, ass shot, your son graduation, we don't give a damn if that little nigga graduate. Hey. Hey. What's the deal, man? Ha Ha Davis, man. Make sure y'all check out Tops on Defiant Digital. We in the building. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Mr. CP, I have a question for you. What's up, uh, Could it be said that your client, Mr. Kendrick Lamar, is a good rapper, but some say he's overrated and overhyped. What do you say to that? I say that everything is subjective. You know, I think that if my uh, opponent is gonna use the establishment and the awards won in those establishments as a measure for greatness, then we can too, right? There is a, there's only one rapper that's ever won a Pulitzer, and that's a big deal. Whether you want to admit it or not, your client does rap. He does rap. He is up for that award and he's overlooked. He is, his lyrics are up for discussion in colleges if they wanted it to, but they're not. Drake is amazing. But every now and then there comes along a rapper who can literally do anything. And right now, these both, these rappers are so great. We're talking about, you know, apples and oranges at this point. You know, those are both fruit. And I also want to point out the fact that my client said something that I think is very, very key and important in this. Drake has been top three his whole career, right? Kendrick has been top three his whole career as well. Ooh, are, are, are you sure? I believe it was uh, 2008 or nine when Dr. Dre came out and said, this guy's gonna be the king of the West. He deemed this man the king of the West. This is Dr. Dre out of his mouth, one of the best producers in hip hop that kind of deemed hip hop. You said earlier that Drake taught us how to feel. I would argue, and actually so would your client, Drake, in that that was Kanye West. The most successful rapper ever in the game is not Drake because all of those things have to amount to money and that also was Kanye West. Also, uh, the person who Drake was quote unquote beefed out with, who really some of his best music was made with, and um, he chose to squash it and almost got sunned, was also by Kanye West. You see, you talk about my client not wanting to battle, but that's not true. 2011, my client called out the whole rap community to battle. Nobody answered the bell. You know why? Because nobody wants to fuck with Kendrick. <laughs> to the point where, to this day, nobody even calls him out. Drake gets called out all the time. Because of what he's doing, his stature does not really match the genre, right? He's coming in with some whole other shit that kind of we're not familiar with as it pertains to what it means to be a real rap star, right? For example, he's been on top of the game for a long time. A lot of albums, it's a lot of pressure to stay relevant. So much pressure, in fact, that one would even lend to a ghostwriter. Oh, here we go with this. Which is crazy because who was the GOAT? The nigga that spoke it or the nigga that wrote it? 
I've heard the reference tracks. You heard one reference track from Quentin Miller, and if he was that great, why doesn't he write those records for himself? Right. Well, if Drake was that great, why didn't he think of it? <laughs> so you mean to tell me all those no, other albums that I mean, he has, somebody would just want to What I mean, what I mean to tell you is what my client and Andre 3000 and Lauryn Hill have in common is the sincerity in their message. The fact that this can only come from me. Once every 10 fucking years. But it can only come from me. If they had Ghostwriters, they could drop every fucking year, couldn't they? So out of Drake's 13-year career, there's been one allegation of one ghostwriter, and that's all you're sticking to? No, bro. One that we know of. How many allegations are like that about Kendrick? When you talk about records, you talk about being undefeated. You talk about the, the, the numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Right, 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 right. Kendrick has zero allegations like that. He has zero niggas coming for him, trying to roast him, trying to uh, pick him into a battle. He has zero problems in the rap industry. There are two things going on here that maybe uh, you as a Drake consumer can't really see, right? There is a show and then it's the business, right? You enjoying the show and that's cool. We're enjoying the business. Think of what? This is, <laughs> <laughs> the, the business is hip hop. The show has a script. Somebody else write the script. You read the script. Okay. You gotta pay that person who wrote that if you, Real. But what I, what I need y'all to understand is that when you start talking about these GOAT debates, I tend to lean towards the one that does not have a blemish on their record. I don't care how dope it is, right? You're the kind of guy that'll still bump R. Kelly since it's all about the music. But the bottom line is his, his, his record is not without a blemish. Therefore, when I talk about GOATs, I give it to the person who is undefeated. Facts are the facts. My nigga's undefeated, your nigga's not. Do you understand how opinionated your closing argument is? Do you understand how opinionated it is for the white academy to vote that your rap album is dope enough to get a Grammy? That's one of the three criteria, and your client loses them all. He loses in sales, he loses in awards, and he loses in impact. And you're still arguing for him? Well, impact this is, is all your only... opinion. Just say impact... CP likes this nigga. You named yourself a fat version of your client. <laughs> I'm an opportunist, sir. Okay, then. The point I'm trying to make, Your Honor, and this is gonna be my closing statement, is that, you know, um, Drake is great. A lot of people go into making Drake great, right? Certain artists only drop when it's the art. See, Drake is, in my opinion, in a machine, and he knows he's on the top of this game, and he has to keep continue to drop, even if those aren't his real feelings. One of my favorite shows was Martin. Right, but they not they don't they they think that Seinfeld is a better show because of the numbers that it did, because of the ratings that it had, because of the impact. They think Friends is a better show than Martin. They think that um, Mick and Morty and all that bullshit is a better show than Martin. But we know what the real goat show is. We don't let the numbers and the awards skew our opinion. But you do argue awards when it's in your client's best interest because you no. said pull it to thirty eight times. No. So when it's, when, it's, when it's for your client, then it's let's talk awards. But guess but what, though? Guess what, ones. though? A Pulitzer is not an award that you're nominated for. You're gifted that award based on your greatness. He had no control over trying to win a Pulitzer. You think a rapper goes into the studio trying to win a Pulitzer? No. That's what makes it even doper of an award. This is like, oh, he woke up one day, oh, I want a Pulitzer? Goddamn, for what? Damn, goddamn. <laughs> Ten seconds, Mr. I would never say that Drake isn't great. I think Drake is an amazing dude. I think he's a, a positive impact for the culture to kind of mend. You know, he shows a friendlier side of being black. Drake helps a lot of us by our perception to the media. But guess what? Who we really are and what we really got going on and what our struggle really is and what our rise really is, that's what Kendrick is talking about. When, when, when you got to go home and take that bullshit fake ass mask off that you got to wear, when you answer the phone at T-Mobile talking like you one of them motherfuckers, when you get home, Kendrick is who you fuck you need to be. It's my end of statement. The conclusion of Drake versus Kendrick when Cancel Court returns. Share. Share it with your granny on Facebook. Share it with the woke mob on Twitter. Share it with your Instagram crush. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We appreciate all your support. This is for both sides, for both of you to speak on this. Both of your clients throw subliminal disses at each other. Could you speak on this beef, this undertone, the, the disses that go back and forth in their songs? Could you speak on that? The, the culture wants to know. Yeah, I, I think when, when, you know, when Drizzy comes for, for, for uh, Kendrick, it's, not, it's less of a diss and more of just an a honest statement that he says. Like, and I can quote from when he says, you know, on 100, on one of my other favorite rappers, The Game, shout out The Game. 
He had rapped. You like a fat uh, game too. <laughs> <laughs> he said. He said, and I quote: "If I held back the truth." and I just gave out compliments, I would have all of your fans if I didn't go pop and just stayed on some conscious shit. So, that, if you, I don't know if any Jay-Z fans in here? Any, yeah, any Jay-Z? Yeah. Somebody help me with the line that Jay-Z said about, uh, he said, lyrically, truth be told, I'd be twi-lib twi quali, but honestly, I ain't been rapping like, con I wanted to rap, I wanted to rap like mil. common sense, but I did five mil. I ain't been rapping like common sense. This is the same shit that Drake is saying. Nigga, look, I can do the backpack shit. I can put a dictionary in a blender and pour a rap smoothie. I could do that if I wanted to. But I'd rather make these fucking hits and make some shit for the club. And then when you listen to my album, you can get into the more introspective shit. That's what I think he's saying. And he knew he wanted to be known to the masses. He didn't want to make group music for one isolated group of people. He wanted to make music that everybody could enjoy. That a kid from Canada could enjoy and a kid from Compton could enjoy. And I think he did that time and time again. I love how you expect your goat to come out the club. What I like about their, uh, their disses is the fact that when Kendrick disses Drake, he'll even do it on a Drake album. Kendrick was on Take Care. On Buried Alive? Buried Alive. And he said that, you know, I sat here talking to this corny ass nigga. Basically, he said when the nigga told me he was my age, trying to give me advice about how to make it in the rap game, I lost respect for the nigga on his album. He should have took that advice that Drake was trying to give him. Guess what, though? He also, he also called Drake's name out, literally. Mm -hmm. After he gave respect to all the goats who he felt like had influenced him, he then opened it up and said, everybody, including Drake, your goat, mm -hmm. right? But see, when Pusha T say something about Drake, or when Meek say something about Drake, it's right back at them. Mm -hmm. But when Kendrick says something about Drake, now it's you know I don't know why they've been lying, but your shit is not that inspiring. I think the way Drake looks at that is though, is that I'm not even really giving you the look like that to be for me because at least with a Meek, at least with a with a with a Pusha T, at least niggas is in the game consistent enough dropping music every couple of years. Do you know that it is literally a fact? We did not get an album for Kendrick for five years. And when we got it, it was mid at best. What's that? What, what album was that? Morale best. and Steppers? Mid. I love that album, so I don't think it's mid, but you know, whatever. What's your favorite three songs? Remember Since what? you love it, what's your favorite three songs? Um, come, on, come on. Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, 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 real talk. Oh, real talk. Uh, it's the name of the song. It's, it's, it's Count Me Out. Count Me Out. And then uh, Rich Spirit. No, no, Rich Spirit. The joint with Kendrick. And, I mean, the joint with uh, Kodak and Count Me Out. But hold on, though. The joint with Kodak. He had like four of them. Which one? No, no, the song with Kodak. Not the, not the interludes, but I, I get it done. You ain't getting you you this to the thank album you, for real. Thank you, fellas. We have to end this case. Because now you've done your part. Now it's up to you, the jury, to make a sound and decisive judgment. All those in favor of Kendrick Lamar being the number one rapper of this generation, please raise your right hand and say, I. 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 Hands down. All those in favor of Drake being the number one rapper of this generation, please raise your right hand and say, I. 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 Thank you. <laughs> the decision was decisive. The decision was brutal but we have our answer. The fuck happened? The greatest rapper of this generation is over here. Kendrick Lamar, and that is so ordered. Court is adjourned. Great fucking entertainment. What's up? Appreciate everybody, appreciate everybody, everybody. These niggas here. Yeah. Way to make a sound decision, man. Way to make a sound decision. I feel like the case definitely needed to be tried. The culture kept speaking about it. It was very, very important, and I was honored that I, I got the call. In this line of work, you know, it's not about what you know, it's about what you can prove. As far as the verdict, I hated the verdict. I feel like the jury is a bunch of uh, complete, uh, ra irrational human beings. I mean, I felt like I came with the facts and I came, I came with them repeatedly and they basically want to go on emotion. And uh, I'm happy to be the kind of attorney that, you know, can bring my clients justice, you know? Uh, whether they deserve it or not, it's subjective. Shout out to the guy on the other side of the table, CP. He's a great lawyer. He argued great bullshit points. He killed it. I'm like, man, you know, when he said he was fat Drake, I'm like, oh my God, I don't know how I'm gonna beat the fat version of the nigga I'm trying to beat, but it happened, man. Sometimes fat niggas get beat too. So if there's any drug dealers out there, any murderers, you're trying to beat some shit you know you did and you know you're guilty, you need to call CP because he can get you out of some bullshit. Absolutely, fucking lutely because if you did it, you didn't do it. And if you did do it, no, you didn't. All right? We're going to get you off. We're going to talk about it. Call me. 1-800-WHO-DID-WHAT. That's 1-800-WHO-DID-WHAT. I'm out. I'm taking this fucking suit off.
Yeah. <laughs>